So there we are, right? All right, we're down 6-5 going into the bottom of the ninth inning, okay? And we get a guy on base. We get a guy on base, and then we bunt him over, so we got a guy on second, and our leadoff hitter comes up, right? And Ole Miss, this coach has been there 2,000 years, 20 years, whatever, been to a College World Series, the only one they can claim in the modern era. And they decide to walk our leadoff hitter, intentionally walking, putting the winning run on base, and, and the next guy, the first pitch, hits one in the gap, and the leadoff hitter runs his butt off and scores, and all of a sudden Ole Miss fans go crazy. Oh, the tears, the tears, the whining, it is delicious. I, I'm not going to eat today. I'm not going to eat today because the tears and the sadness coming out of Oxford over that baseball game last night is just so delicious. Probably won't eat for a week. If you notice, oh, hi, more Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast. I've just been sitting here in this chair talking like that for 20 minutes. If you notice, I'm wearing my beautiful Mississippi State baseball pullover today that I got at Maroon Company this weekend. I probably should have uh, ironed it before I, I wore it for the first time, but I didn't, and it is uh, it is epic. Look at it. Corey Dickey says, how about them diamond dogs? My goodness. That's so satisfying. That's so funny. Ole Miss, a fake top 10 team this year. They're, they're having a good season. They're going to host a regional they'll ultimately lose, and they are they're playing well. And they can't beat Mississippi State. Mississippi State baseball, complete ownage. Complete ownage of Ole Miss. They have repossessed Ole Miss baseball. They have foreclosed on Ole Miss baseball. You can now put a sign out there, property of Mississippi State University. Hail State from Dublin, Amanda Williams-Yara. Lisa Ramsey says the Rebel Killers, Jake and Luke. Go Dogs from Mary Rushing Isbell. Brian Mendy Guest loves my dogs. So this is more Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. I'm worried about this wrinkled, this wrinkled shirt, but I love my pullover so much. I love my pullover so very much. Uh, I just got it at Maroon Company the other day. My wife just had our second baby in the hospital room watching the live feed. Rob Chittum, congratulations. Congratulations to Rob Chittum, who just had his second child. Uh, you're halfway there, halfway to where I'm at, Rob, so keep putting in work. Hail State from Una, Una, Mississippi, up in northern Clay County. I got folks in Una over there on off Baker Baker Road. Hail State from Mississippi State University on my move out day. Raphael Jones, congratulations. Great game last night, but can we make the NCAA tournament with four series left against three ranked teams? Justin Kane Holiday. So I, I don't think that the fact that they're ranked should bother you at all. Florida obviously is very good, but Listen, State just went – they're 6-1 and one against top 10 teams. Uh, they have been able to raise their level of play. Arkansas was very good, number three in the country, and State took three games. So, with the way the team is playing, uh, I think that's good. I, I think it's going to help the RPI, too, playing those good teams. I, I think we would rather be playing three ranked teams in the last four series than three unranked teams. What do we have to do to get to a regional? Just continue playing like they're playing right now. No, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I don't have everything mapped out, but I do think Mississippi State, if they keep on the current path, they'll they'll be in good shape. Stephen Stafford and McGee today. Michael Clyburn from Hazelhurst checking in. Danny Higginbotham from uh, Thorne, Mississippi, up in Chickasaw County. I think if we stay above 500, we'll make regional junior Ray. The RPI is good. The resume is suddenly really good. You know, before Arkansas, would I say State's going to make a regional? Well, since Friday, State has four wins over top 10 teams they didn't have before. RPI at 36, that's a good RPI. If State wins these next two, these next series, they could even get a two seed in the regional, says Chad Mass. Pump the brakes on that. But, you know, A&M, who are the series left? A&M, Alabama, Kentucky, and Florida, is that right? That might be right, that might be wrong. Somebody correct me. Santa Dog from Meridian checking in. Hello, Scott Murphy Vaughn. Just got the boys today. Just got the uh, all male Shrekking crew. As I've got uh, Turp and Nate on the other side of the glass. What's up? Land Shark not here today. Nope. She called in sick, huh? Mm -hmm. So as soon as Mark leaves, as soon as Mark leaves, she she calls in sick. You know how many days I've called in sick? None. Because you're a Zero. soldier. You're a warrior. Yes, trooper. Trooper. There you go. <laughs> Nate, quit coughing. So yeah. Um, Home to Texas A&M, I believe, at Kentucky and at Alabama, and Florida at home. 
boy, if you you might just hopefully you can put yourself in a situation not having a sweet Florida or something like that. But um, the opportunity is there. State has given itself an opportunity. That's all you can ask out of this season that has been tumultuous and it started on that that the the sour note. But this team has battled, and last night was a great sign of that. State falls behind six five in the ninth, but they battle. They don't they don't give in. They don't say poor us. They just uh, they go out there. They take advantage of uh, they get a man on base. He gets moved to second. Ole Miss, in one of the dumber moves I've ever seen, walks the uh, intentionally walks the winning run on base. And Luke Alexander says, okay, you're going to give me a chance at the game-winning RBI. Here it is. And that's what happened. Hail State from Birmingham. Love the show. Beaver Peterson. Shout out to Beaver Peterson. Thanks for uh, being here, Beaver Peterson. I just love that name so much. I'm sorry. Beaver Peterson. <laughs> You're my favorite name I've ever said on the show. I want to hang out with you. Landshark embarrassed about the loss last night, says Jay Robertson. Grace Thacker Good says Landshark couldn't face us today. Maybe true. I don't know. Facts. It could be facts. I don't know. I mean, she's not here. That's all I can tell you. Quick question. Who says the audio clip again? What? Who is calling the audio clip? Jim Ellis. Jim Ellis. Got yes. J I M E L L I S. Hey, Brandon, I've noticed the guys on the B&B show talking about your show a lot over the last few days, almost like they're more concerned with your show than theirs. Are they the Ole Miss of MSU podcast? Paul Bowles asked that question. I think I have a new favorite question in the history of this show. Um, don't know. I don't really I – don't, I don't listen to them, so I'll take your word for it. Oh, boy. Okay. Whoa, we're running behind already. Landshark's usually telling me what to do. Did you just do? Did you just do the Usain Bolt celebration? Is that what mm -hmm. you did? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty loose, loose cannon over here. So oh, you are. So on today's there. show, we're going to talk about the baseball game, how satisfying that was. We'll talk about bracketology for next year that's come out already and for ESPN, and they view state basketball favorably. We'll talk about Mississippi State scheduling a non-conference Power Five opponent for 2023, 2023, 2024, something like that. I don't know. I'll probably be dead by then. But, uh, yeah, Arizona State getting scheduled. And two-minute drill at the end of the show. And I got to tell you, Terp, we are pretty much at the limits of my creativity on the two-minute drill. I, 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 don't, I, don't know, I don't know how creative I can get with these questions anymore because today's two-minute drill is just ridiculous. Is it good or bad? Depending on what you think about ridiculous questions, it's good. I right. mean, if, you, the more, if, you, if you're one of those guys that, say, the more, that says the more ridiculous the better, today oh, is for you. I'm excited for it. All right, I'm uh, I'm ready. What do I have to do? There we go. The More Cowbell Show, brought to you by SEC Country. And now, your host of The More Cowbell Show, Brandon Walker. Can't hear my mic. Boy, oh boy. Man, oh man. Nate, you've been on the podcast for five seconds and you've already messed up the audio. Hi. My name is Brandon Walker. This is More Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. So glad to be here. That is the lefty bell that you can get at Maroon & Co. That, uh, that has a baseball bat for a handle. That is an, isn't that convenient? Isn't that fitting for today as we ring in More Cowbell for a Wednesday the day after? Just one of the more satisfying baseball victories I can remember. Mississippi State has had an up and down season, but it hasn't been up and down when Ole Miss has been the opponent. It has been all up. It has been completely up, much like the end of the Andy Cannizzaro era. But Mississippi State plays Ole Miss last night. They fall behind in the ninth inning, and the rest is history. Mississippi State uh, scores two runs on a Luke Alexander walk-off RB, two-RBI double. So great. 
the the images of Ole Miss fans crying in the stands and stunned in the stands, and then the whining on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere you saw it. It was so delicious. I'm probably not going to eat today. It's it was so de- the tears of Ole Miss fans last night uh, watching their supposed top ten team blow it once again against Mississippi State just might sustain me for the rest of the week. I might just be fat and happy just on that for the rest of the week. We'll talk about that baseball game. We'll talk about that huge win for Mississippi State. Hey, they're six and one against top ten teams. You know, a week ago before the Arkansas series, if I say here's what Mississippi State has to do to make a regional, you would have thought I was crazy. But now it is a very real possibility. Mississippi State is skyrocketing up the RPI. They are skyrocketing up in the eyes of other people around the country uh, based on sweeping Arkansas and now beating Ole Miss in dramatic fashion. We'll talk about the baseball win. We'll talk about bracketology, Mississippi State basketball, picked by ESPN to make the tournament next year. That's a change from the last couple of years. And Mississippi State has added a, another non-conference Power 5 opponent in 2023 and 2024. It is Arizona State. We'll discuss that. And at the end of the show, probably probably the most ridiculous two-minute drill yet. Probably the weirdest collection of five questions you could ever remember. Now, I've got one Mississippi State question, but the, the next four are just – I'm kind of embarrassed about it, to be honest. Kind of embarrassed about it. But now, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Mississippi, oh, by the way, if you can see me on Facebook Live, I'm wearing a balling, an absolutely baller – Mississippi State baseball pullover that I got at Maroon & Company over the weekend. I love it so much. I love it so much that I didn't even let my wife wash it. I just took it right out of the bag and wore it. And, yeah, it's wrinkled a little bit. Whatever. Whatever. I don't care. I'm Brandon Walker. But uh, look at this thing. Look. You know what? I'm going to stand up. No, don't, no, don't zoom in on it. Cause look at it. Huh? Huh? That, I, look, I look like I ought to be coaching first base right now. I look like I should be coaching first base. So that's Maroon & Company, at Maroon & Co. on Twitter, maroonandco.com. Check them out. Boy, that baseball game. My God. So I was following it on Twitter because I work till about 8, and then I drive home. It takes me an hour. So I was following it on Twitter the whole time. When I got home, it was a back-and-forth game. I mean, it was a crazy good game. Forget the fact that Mississippi State won. It was a crazy good game. I don't know if any team ever led by more than one run. I think it was one nothing Ole Miss, then 2-1 Mississippi State, then 3-2 Ole Miss. Then 3-3, three, three, then 4-3, four, three, then 4-4, four, four, then 5-4, then 6-5, then 7-6. Incredible baseball game. And it would have been an incredible baseball game even if State hadn't won. But guess what? They did because it's Ole Miss, it's Mississippi State, and Mississippi State baseball has claimed ownership of the Ole Miss baseball program. Ole Miss baseball cannot do anything without the permission of Mississippi State. That's how deep the ownership is. We have them chained up, chained up in the backyard behind the fence. That's the ownership situation here, Mississippi State baseball over Ole Miss. So, you've watched it. You've talked about it. Let's just go ahead and do a couple of clips here because you know what happened. Mississippi State trailing 6-5, to five, going in the bottom of the ninth after just a ludicrous decision by Gary Henderson that I'll get into in a minute. But Mississippi State trailing 6-5, to five, going in the bottom of the ninth. They get a runner on. They bunt him over. Ole Miss makes one of the most elementary baseball mistakes I've ever seen. They walk, intentionally walk. They purposely, they chose to put the fastest player on the field, the winning run on first base. They chose to do it. He didn't have to earn it. He didn't have to put a ball somewhere. He didn't have to, to hit a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. He walked up there, and they said, you know what, winning run, fastest player on the field, go stand on first base. That is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And that set up Luke Alexander. Are we doing the video or the audio first? Let's do the uh, let's do the video first. So this is what it looked like if you're watching, and you'll hear audio too if you're on the podcast. But if you're watching on the Facebook Live and on Twitter and on YouTube, this is what it looked like last night. One might say it's not his night. Another might say he's due. Alexander right center field. That's down into the wall. It will at least tie the game. Will Mangum try to score? The answer? Yes. Man Mississippi alive. State Man wins alive. the game. I'll tell you. Logan I got to tell you something. First of all, that was just awful camera work by ESPN and SEC Network. That was awful. Couldn't see the guy score. It was just terrible camera work. They showed the pitcher walking off for way too long. But, wow, that is so dramatic. Luke Alexander already has a walk-off home run over Ole Miss. 
And then he had the huge home run against Arkansas the other night. He has become Mississippi State's big-time clutch performer. And to say nothing of Jake Mangum, who is also great, but Luke Alexander has got some absolutely gigantic hits this year. And that one last night was absolutely big time because he, uh, again, it was a good pitch. It was a fastball on the outside uh, part of the plate, and he went with it, drove to the right center field gap, and Jake Mangum ran like a madman. Now that's what it looked and sounded like on SEC Network. This is what it sounded like with the great Jim Ellis. On the pitch coming, ball is in the air, in the gap, right center field, all the way to the wall, Mangum's a third, across the plate is Anderson, here he comes, here he comes, he scores, Bulldogs have won it in walk-off fashion by a score of 7-6 to six over Ole Miss. Boy, that was great. The crack of the bat and then Jim Ellis getting excited in that roar. I wasn't there, I don't know what the... Um, what the fan breakdown was, what the crowd breakdown was, but I, I feel like it was at least 60-40 state. I mean, that was a loud roar. It sounded like a home game. Um, but Jim Ellis, as always, the best in the business, uh, and him calling that is fantastic. Uh, let's just talk about Gary Henderson with his – the two managers. Like Gary Henderson has been around the SEC for a long time. I think he's been in coaching 20-something years. Mike Bianco has built the Ole Miss program out of nothing, out of absolutely nothing, and he's built a good program. You know, he probably hasn't won to the level that maybe he could have, but uh, yeah, he's built he built the program by himself. And, but last night, a great coach like Mike Bianco made that was just the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You're you're leading by a run in the ninth, and you decide you choose to put the winning run on base, and it happens to be the the fastest guy in the building, the fastest guy in the entire ballpark. You you tell him you don't make him hit the ball in play. You don't make him scratch his way on base. You get you put him on base. You choose to let him go stand three bases away from beating him. And uh, that's what happened. Luke Alexander, clutch. Yeah, and another thing. They walked Mangum because Mangum has, has been 20. He's 22 of 49 against Ole Miss. He's been so great against Ole Miss. The guy you walked Mangum to get to beat you with a walk-off not two weeks ago. He beat. He came back. He hit a three-run home run against Arkansas. He's the most clutch player Mississippi State's had this year. You chose to face him with the winning run on base. That's that is so remarkably elementary. I can't believe it happened, and it bailed Gary Anderson out, who made a pitching change he shouldn't have made in the top of the ninth. But what it means, you know, it's not a conference victory. But what it means is State is now six and one against top ten teams. It's a huge RPI boost. It's a team that now has their sights set on making a regional. It's a team that now the picture is coming into focus. After the tough start to the season with Andy Cannizzaro doing what he did, after some head-scratching losses, some tough losses, a very tough start to SEC play, Mississippi State has righted the ship. They're going in the right direction, and they see the goal now. They know what the goal is, and winning games like that last night on your last at-bat beating a top-10 team, going 6-1 and one against top-10 teams, going 4-0 and oh against top-10 teams since Friday night, really puts Mississippi State in good position. And last thing about this, I love Mississippi State. I love Mississippi State baseball. I love Mississippi State basketball. I love Mississippi State football. I love everything about Mississippi State. But I got to be honest, watching Ole Miss fans lose might be my favorite hobby. Like if somebody put a microphone in front of me, oh, they did, and they asked me, what is your favorite thing to do? It might be watching Ole Miss fans lose and what comes with it. And the video of the people, of the Ole Miss fans just standing in stunned silence last night. And you've seen the, the family that was crying, that was yelling at everybody. Oh, and now you get on Twitter and this game doesn't matter and blah, 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 blah. And this was your Super Bowl, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it's just so terrific. I love it so much. I love Mississippi State winning, but I, I also love Ole Miss losing. I will admit that. That's how sad I am. Mississippi State non-conference football schedule is uh, coming into form for the next 10 years. Coming into form for the next 10 years as Mississippi State has inked a deal with Arizona State to play in 2023 and 2024. Again, Mississippi State will go to Tempe first, and they'll, uh, they'll have the home game second. I don't know why we keep doing that. We have scheduled, we scheduled, let's see, BYU and then Kansas State and who else? NC State and Arizona and Arizona State and Texas Tech. Texas Tech's not until 2028 and 2029. We go on the road first in 
every series I just mentioned except for Texas Tech. Why does that keep happening? Why do we keep putting ourselves behind the eight ball? It's a two-game series. Why don't we try to get the advantage every now and then? Do we have to bend over every single time and take it? I don't understand why this keeps happening. But that's not really important. It's a two-game series. It's not really that important. It's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being oversensitive. But certainly, Arizona State is a quality non-conference opponent. I, I like the list. I mean, these are not you're not going out scheduling Florida State. You're not, you're not putting yourself. Remember when we scheduled Oregon right when they got to the top of their game? And we scheduled West Virginia right when they had Pat White. And we kind of put our teams in bad situations. These, I think these are respectable opponents. These are very manageable games whenever they happen. I just can't see a world where Kansas State over the next two years is a national title contender, but they are a very – they could be a nine-win team in the Big 12. NC State the same way. I think they're, you know, they're perennially a threat to be an eight, nine-win team. Arizona, I think they might. I, you know, we'll see. They've got Kevin Sumlin now, so they've got a couple of years to get right before we face them. Arizona State will probably be replacing Herm Edwards in the next couple of years, and we'll, we'll get them after that. Texas Tech, how do you know 10 years out? You don't know anything. But uh, Arizona State – I do like the uh, I like the idea of long trips, uh, long trips to new places for our fan base. Uh, our fan base will travel, and you know a lot of the old mindset was keep them keep the games as close as you can. But you know it's kind of a new new day for football, a new day for college football, and expanding your brand and stuff like that, and going out to Arizona twice. I like it. I, I like it a lot. A real quick on football before I get off this: Garrett Schrader, the four-star Mississippi State commit quarterback, who looks like a fantastic player out of Charlotte Christian in Charlotte, North Carolina. So he got his fourth star recently on ESPN. And I've been calling him a four star the whole time because he is. You can't watch this guy's highlight tape. You can't watch his junior film or sophomore film and come away thinking that's a three star. And the reason he's been a three star on 24-7's composite, which, which brings into account rivals and ESPN, the reason I haven't been referring to him as that is because 24-7 and Scout, which merged, have the most extensive network. They put in the most work. Rivals, ESPN, their recruiting rankings not very good. And if you're sitting in a room in Bristol, Connecticut, and you think Garrett Schrader is a three-star quarterback, you don't know what you're talking about. So I've always been calling him a four-star. Now ESPN has changed it. They called him a four-star. So he is a four-star across the board. Same player. Star doesn't really matter. But uh, good for Garrett Schrader because I know it's probably a boost to him. More love for Mississippi State basketball. Bracketology likes Mississippi State. ESPN Bracketology comes out way too early. Bracketology for 2018 and 19. For the first time in years, Mississippi State will enter the season expected to make the tournament. Bracketology has State as a seven seed facing Penn State, which is straight out of my nightmares. But facing Penn State, you know it won't go down like that. But seven seed is still a pretty good shot of respect from ESPN for a team that hasn't made the tournament in so many years. And I, I'm not going to talk about this as much. I'm just going to go to this. Across the board, will 2018 expectations collectively in the Big Four be higher than they've ever been at Mississippi State? Think about this. Football, State's going to be a preseason. I think they're going to be picked between 15 and 20. I think they should be picked between 10 and 15, but I think they'll be picked between 15 and 20 on the AP. Bas men's basketball, I think, will be picked between 15 and 25, probably between 18 and 25. I think they'll be in the lower end of the top 25, but they'll still be there. I, I really do believe that. Women's basketball, not going to be a national title contender probably, but I still think they're going to be preseason ranked between 5 and 10. I think they'll get a lot of respect. I think they'll be way up there. And baseball will have the excitement of a new coach. We don't know who it's going to be. We've been led to believe, if you, hear, if you believe what you uh, hear behind the scenes, that Cohen has this guy already, and it's a big name. So. Baseball is going to have a ton of excitement. Will this be the most excitement across the board in the Big Four that we've ever had? I think it might be. I think it might be. Two-minute drill. I'll get the rational question out of the way first. Two-minute drill. I ask you five questions. You give me the answers. You can tweet, it, tweet me your answers if you're watching on Twitter. You can, uh, if you're participating in Facebook Live, please give them to me. If you're on the podcast, please teleport or what do you call that? Telepathy? Give me your, your answers through telepathy, please. Number one, give me one sentence to describe this Mississippi State baseball team. Give me one. The questions get more ridiculous, but this is for the state fans. Give me one sentence to describe this Mississippi State baseball team. 
I'll let the Facebook Live audience chew on that for a second. They can, uh, hello, Asheville, Barry Moore, checking in from Asheville on the Facebook Live. Steve C. says, it's hard for me to pay any mind to other sports until baseball season is over this year. Ginger Tuck says, this team is awesome. Michael Clyburn says, hungry. Rob Chittam says, gritty. Trey Adcox says, this team is down but not out. Jared Mansoor says, this season is a roller coaster. All of these are correct. Kevin Wilcher also says, roller coaster. It's, it's been an up and down ride. It's been an up and down ride, and I'm not talking about what got Cannizzaro fired. This team never gives up. Overcoming adversity, Ole Miss at home again, Omaha. 70% of the earth is covered by water. The rest, Jake Mangum, Chris Williams. Jekyll and Hyde, says uh, Richard Rive. Late Bloomer, says Danny E. Pinter. Full of surprise, says Blake Boswell. Just when you think you're done, they pull you back in, says Chad Mass. That's a good way to look at it. Jay Robertson with a very good sentence. They are infuriatingly fun to watch infuriatingly fun to watch. That's a great one to end on right there. And number two, what's the worst dessert? We've asked what's the best dessert before. What's the worst dessert? What's the one that just, eh. All of them. Yeah, I know you don't like sweets. Please let Nate talk. I, Nate, he turned it down on you. Pumpkin pie. He said pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pie is a good answer. Pumpkin pie. You know, we make pie out of everything. Why would we eat pumpkin? I actually don't mind pumpkin pie. Oh, okay, whatever. Anything like, like death by chocolate has to be the worst. What in the world is wrong with you? That, like fudge, chocolate, eh. Bad. Jello, fruitcake, says Bobby Richardson. Cherry pie, Watergate salad. I don't know what Watergate salad is. Rhubarb pie, says uh, D. Curtis. Lemon pie, says Ryan DeWeese. Flan, humble pie, fruitcake, fruitcake. I hope they're answering the question and not calling me names. Anything pumpkin? Nothing, says Martin Smith. Blueberry pie, rice pudding. This is fast. Anything fat-free or sugar-free? Chess pie, anchovy popsicle. Anchovy popsicle. I think now he's Steve C's having fun with me. Figgy pudding, pumpkin pie, and fruitcake. Number three. Let's go ahead and dive completely off the rails. Terp, don't answer this too enthusiastically. If you could quit your job today and become an expert in any other career, what do you choose? If you could quit your job today and become an expert in any other, you know, go to the top of any other field, what would you choose? Terp, you're thinking about it way too vigorously. I didn't know. Put your resume down, Terp. Put your resume down. I was just kidding about quitting your job. You're not allowed to. You know what I always wanted to do if, if I didn't? I don't know how I ended up doing this. But I always wanted to be a weatherman. I wanted to be a weatherman on TV. Why is that? I just love the – I love – I am fasc- like have a pretty easy job. I'm fascinated by weather. Because now it's all done yeah. by technology. I, when I was coming up, I was, I was terrified by weather, but now I'm just fascinated with it. Danny E. Pinter would be bass fishing. Martin Smith would be an SEC country podcaster for more cowbell. Entrepreneur for Landon Miles, beer drinking and bass fishing, Scott H. Chilton, somebody says crappie fishing, somebody says cattle farming. A wedding event planner, Tanya Benny, never seen Tanya here before, thanks for being here. Ryan Campbell, dealing with stocks, working for an hour or two each day and then doing something else and being well off, sounds good. Marine biology from two straight people, Jessica Elm Balsley and Brian Sisk, teacher, coach, Lance Shane, football game, uh, Ryan DeWeese, songwriter, Charlie Robinson, cannabis, cancer research, Jay Robertson. <laughs> Or really weeding out the good answers here. PGA golfer, Brittany Zell, musician, national touring date, uh, national touring late model dirt driver. Sports Illustrated swimsuit photographer, Bernal McGee. Wow, these are good answers. D. Curtis says retired. Number four, what is the best pet outside of a dog or a cat? What is the best pet outside of a dog or a cat? Definitely not a fish. Not I a fish. I think of other pets. Not going with a fish. It's the best pet outside of a. It could be a maybe like a snake, a, a oh. bunny rabbit. Uh, I was just thinking maybe a bunny. A ferret. No, not a ferret. Uh, uh, I'd say a bunny would uh, be my leading. Uh, a choice. rabbit. Okay. Yeah. How about a pig? Pigs are smart. Yeah, they're. Pigs are smart. And clean, remarkably clean. 
Horse. That's a good one. Goat. Turtle. Turtle. Two turtle. two straight Ooh. turtles. Ooh. Tur- not not terrapins. Let's hold that hold that answer because we're coming coming up to that in a minute. Wolverines. Horse. Raccoon. Chicken creates eggs. What do you drink when you're thinking of these questions? I have no idea. Spider monkey. Sugar glider for the wind. Blake Boswell. A bird. Charlie Robinson. Owl. Who has a pet owl? Who? Harry Potter. Who? You ruined my joke. <laughs> that wasn't very funny. It was pretty funny. Oh, right. chickens, a gerbil, horse. What a stupid question. Number five. Speaking of stupid questions, which animal mascot in college football would be the most ridiculous to lead a team onto the field? Terrapin. It. You know. It it, crawl. That wouldn't fire the team up very much, would it? No, it would Oregon literally it would be like walking. What? Oregon ducks. The duck just waddling yeah, the team. That would be cool. I'd like the duck. Would I'd he fly? Uh, would he fly or would he waddle? I feel like he'd oh. have to waddle. Yeah, a duck. Yeah. Um, Terrapin has to be. What about Georgia Tech just unleashing a swarm of yellow jackets? It has to be one yellow jacket. It's scary if you're close by. It would be. I mean, it'd just be bad for the fans. Just one just one yellow jacket yellow flies jacket out to the fifty. Leash out. <laughs> on a leash. Yeah. How are you going to put a yellow jacket on a leash? You get a little you collar them. on it. You freeze them in All right. The- I'm muting Nate. Land sh- thank you. Land shark, land shark, banana slugs, UC Santa Cruz. <laughs> Martin Smith says beaver. Oregon State getting let out by a beaver. Um, I think that's what got – oh, never mind. Never mind. I was just going to make another bad joke. Land shark, land shark. Well, land shark doesn't actually exist. I mean, this one does, but she's sick today. A black land rebel bear shark fighting okra. Is that really their mascot? Doesn't Delta no State way. go by like nine things, huh? A fighting okra? Yeah, Delta thing. State. Yeah. Fried okra is delicious. Just need you to know that. It's my favorite. It is your favorite. Mm-hmm. You've actually had that. I had it that one day. You usually don't eat food. I ate so much food. Yeah, you had fried okra from the Cox Cafeteria. Yeah, that, I had one piece. That's not real fried okra. Well, where am I supposed to get a real one from? Uh, any southern woman's house. Okay. <laughs> Any southern woman. Very nice. Says all your jokes are bad. That's not true. Some of my jokes are good. Some of my jokes are funny. I'm betting like 400 on jokes. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'll drop the podcasters off here mercifully and end your misery. Thank you for uh, listening. I appreciate you listening for the uh, Twitter audience, for the Facebook Live audience, for the YouTube audience. Here I come. We're going to talk together for about 10 minutes. It's going to be ridiculous. Can't wait. My name is Brandon Walker. You've been listening to More Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. Somebody says, uh, oh, Brittany Zell, one of my favorites, says, you are hilarious in my book. I'm hilarious in everybody's book. I'm a terrific person. Nothing, Terp? No? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Eh? All right. So uh, what do you guys want to talk about? Uh, the worst dessert was interesting. Um, what are we going to eat for lunch today? You go, are you going over to Cox uh, Cafeteria? It's Wednesday. I think I'm done with that. You think you're done with that? You're not yeah, going over there anymore? It's not good. It is good. It's delicious. Mm-mm. Oh, Nate's anti-Cox Cafeteria, too. Yes. I'm going to Publix. Publix. Pub subs. Well, you can't hate on public subs. Question, like arguably the best in. I I never go to a grocery store to eat lunch. I I I. Have I you ever had a public sub? No. I'm not. Yeah, that's why. I don't love the atmosphere at Publix, to be honest. It feels a little hoity-toity to me. A little, a little, a little too clean. A little too nice. Uh, just I kind of like my grocery store to to feel not dirty, but. Yeah, a little dirty. Just not not like Publix clean. You understand what I'm saying? You don't. Okay. I was totally zoned out that whole time. You don't like Publix? I like Publix. I just I don't like going on there all the time. I like to rotate my grocery stores. Uh, and just go to one of the closest to your house. No, I like to rotate. We, in 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 my town, so we have we have an Ingles, a Kroger, and a Publix, and I I rotate between all three. And an Aldi, which Aldi is also I like Aldi. I don't know if you guys have an Aldi where you are. Turp, why are you looking at me like that? I don't understand why you would not, wouldn't just go to the closest one. Because they have different things. You, you, you give like yourself what? a variety. Yes, they do. I, said, I didn't say no. I said like what? He did. 
He's not me. They have different things. They have different approaches. They have different different. Right, man. Uh, like uh, like Kroger juice. Uh, you can get the same juice at uh, at Publix for fifty cents more. Nice. So so you gotta. Like I got listen. I got four kids. Okay. I have yeah, to strategically nice. grocery shop. Let's fill that water. Thank you. What? I've never been to Costco in my life. Why don't you shut up? You ever think about it like that? Got him. Because of growing up in West Point, you only have one or two places to go, said Patrick Wiggins. That's correct. Although in our heyday, we had three or four grocery stores. We had a – I'm going to drop some uh, Mississippi names on you, but we had a, uh, had a Kroger, obviously. And then we had a Jitney Jungle. You all know what a Jitney Jungle is if you're from Mississippi. Uh, and I think sh- for a very short time, when it stopped being a Jitney Jungle, it was a sack and save. Then we had Sunflower. You guys know what a Sunflower is in Mississippi. Preston Smith says team, uh, team visit every uh, grocery store to get the best deals. That's what I do. Hail State from Muncie, Indiana, celebrating my son's 13th birthday, Dar- Darnell watts Juzang. Uh, happy birthday to uh, your son. HBD. I didn't mention Piggly Wiggly or Dell Shamps. Jitney Jungle had talking registers. They did. Uh, Sunflower, Del Shamps. Del Shamps is one we didn't have in West Point. We had in Columbus. Um, Piggly Wiggly, yes. That, that is def- We never had a Piggly Wiggly in West Point. Never had one. What are some other, uh, other uh, grocery store chains in, in Mississippi? Food Giant? ShopRite? No, didn't have that. Acme? Oh, there was a big star in West Point right, right when I was like four or five years old, but it closed. There was a big star. Did you forget Piggly Wiggly? I didn't forget it. Mossy Oak was like opening Disney World for West Point, says Philip Owen. <sighs> Food Max. There it is. Food, Food Max. Food, Food Max is what, is what Jenny J- Jungle became in uh, West Point, the Food Max. Did you have Food Lion? We didn't have Food Lion, but when I moved to South Mississippi for a couple of years, they did have it. Winn-Dixie. There's another one. Winn-Dixie's are everywhere, though. What is the best grocery store? The best grocery store? If you could only go to one for the rest of your life, I'd choose Publix. I would probably choose Kroger. I like Publix, it's a, but it's a little too expensive. Mm-hmm. If I spend 300 at Kroger and if I spend 300 at Publix, I'm getting, a, I'm getting more stuff at Kroger. I don't know. That's no, I'm telling you. I'm not, it's not for debate. It's not, hey, what's your opinion on this? I'm telling you. But I also like to go to Aldi because Aldi you can get – uh, 10 beach balls for a penny. And you'll never know what you're going to find there. Uh, you'll get there and they'll have, you know, a canister of, of uh, 200 pounds of potato sticks for five cents. And you, you buy it that week. Ingles is also a nice grocery store. I like Ingles, but I also hate Ingles. I like Whole Food. Don't hate Jonathan Simmons. I like it too. I'll throw in the Sprouts. Sprouts is good. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're, we're, talking, <laughs> we're talking grocery stores on the show today. Kroger is definitely best, says Russell Berry. Boy, you want to change subjects? How about that baseball game last night, huh? How about that baseball game? How, uh, how fun was that? It wasn't fun in the top of the ninth, but the bottom of the ninth, tremendous fun. I can't believe they walked Jake Mangum. Mike Bianco is so successful, built such a program, and he walked. He intentionally chose to put the fastest runner on the team on base as the winning run. Batting in front of the most clutch hitter on the team. Not only did he walk the fastest player, not only did he say, hey, only fast player on the team that can, that can score from first on, on, a, on a hit, or not the only one, but the fastest player on the team, you go stand on first, and, hey, we're going to pitch to this guy who's already hit a walk-off against it. How crazy was that? Could you imagine? you imagine? We were mad at Gary Henderson for changing, changing pitchers the way he did. Can you imagine if he had done what Bianco did? Bianco, Bianco, Bianco. Caden loves the Bulldogs. Don't know who Caden is, but I'm glad he loves the Bulldogs. Wanda Sorrell Cothran Orr. That's, uh, yeah. So, Caden, if you're watching, good stuff. I couldn't watch the start of it on the ESPN app, says uh, James Weaver. 
I, I didn't see the start of it, but I saw the end of it. Yes, I did. Sure did. Show sure did. Mm-hmm. It is time uh, we can't write off this baseball season, says Amanda williams Jar. I think you're right. I think you're right. So many of us, including me, have written it off since the bad start, but not anymore. We might not win them all, but we win the most important one, Hale State, Willie Harris. Hale State from South Haven says Dwayne Porter. Sue Thickpin says fun in the bottom of the ninth. That's MSU baseball. State is 4-0 in their last ten, top 10 matchups. Jeremiah Body 4-0 since last Friday. In the last week, they beat four top 10 teams. Where can I get a helmet like the one to your right? This one? Um, I This one was given to me by the Mississippi State Athletic Department, so I'm not, I don't know if you can purchase this. Uh, but I, I can you know, I had this one forever and it's old. And I contacted MSU and said, Hey, I got your old helmet on my desk. Can I get a current helmet? And they sent me this one. Any word on Peter's decision? Scott H. Chilton. So he's asking about Lamar Peters, the baseball, the basketball player who, uh, declared for the draft didn't sign an agent. I, I I think we're going to be okay there, but uh, the longer it goes, the more worried I get. I have no news on it. Ole Miss is not a top-10 team. Don't care what the rankings say. Martin Smith, I agree with you. They're not a top-10 team. They got off to a great start this year and played above their heads, but they're not a top-10 team. And it's great that we beat them because it's Ole Miss, and it is a top-10 team currently, and it helps us out a lot. But their pitching's just okay. Their, their bullpen, eh, you saw it last night. I, I, just, I don't think they're a top-10 team. Actually, it was a great move by Bianco. I would walk him every time. All they needed was a ground ball in the infield, and they went. Junior, that's not – I just don't understand how that's a great move. Jake Mangum, for as good as he is, he's not going to hit a home run. You know he's not going to hit a home run. He's not going to walk you off. And you got to make him earn it. you got to make him earn his way on base. He is the winning run. He is the run that beats you. He is the run that ends the game. You can't choose to put him on base. You can't choose to put him in play. Imagine you've got a one-point lead in basketball in the last 10 seconds, and you foul their best shooter and put him on the line and just hope he misses. That's stupid. And they, that's what they did. They fouled him and put him on the line, and then he made the shots. Yeah, that's an awful. Candy Solis Williams, you're right. That, that, no, Junior, that's, that, there's no defending that decision. If you throw with your closer to Jake Mangum, he hits a single and ties the game, you still have life. You're still okay. But doing what they did, just it, it handed us the gun, and we pulled the trigger. State is 7-1 against top 10 teams. I'm sorry. Who's the, uh, who's the seventh? That's my bad. I thought that was 6-1. Still wondering about pitching changes in the ninth. Got lucky, says Wayne Randall. I, I wouldn't say got lucky. I mean, there's nothing lucky about scoring two runs in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, Henderson got lucky that his team bailed him out. I would say that, but the team didn't get lucky. Did anyone ask him what he was thinking, says Laurie Fulgham Garrick? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I know Ole Miss fans have been going crazy. But then what's new? They did it in Starkville and it worked. Junior, it's not a good decision. There's nothing you can say to make that a good decision. State will mess around and win the West this year. Two games back. Two games back, well, a tough schedule. Oh, you mean in football, don't you? I think you mean in football. Maybe you don't. Definitely means football. But again, Junior, I want to go back to this decision. You not only put Jake Mangum on base, you not only lo- you know put the winning run on base, you choose to do that, but you also, by bypassing Mangum, you choose to face the guy who already beat you with a walk-off home run. You choose to bring the guy to bat that has beaten you before, and you choose to do it with a winning run on base. It was not just Mangum. It was also Alexander. you got to factor both of those guys into this equation. Drew Kissman says no, baseball. It was baseball. They're only two games back, and, and that seems um, it's hard to believe, but uh, two games back. The only football team I'm afraid of this year is Auburn, says Blake Boswell. I wouldn't say I'm afraid of Auburn. Outside of Alabama, they're the team I respect the most in the SEC West in 2018, but I don't think I'm afraid of Auburn. I think Auburn needs to be afraid of coming to Starkville. 
You have to walk Kelly Leak with a man on second and a one-run lead. <laughs> Their closer did not seem happy about the intentional walk, says Martin Smith. Bernal McGee is eating lunch at the Old Country Store in Lorman. I wish I were there eating lunch with you at the Old Country Store in Lorman. You going to Cox today? I am. Okay, I what am. are you going to get? Um, probably fish. I've been trying to eat healthy I this you were week. Yesterday. I did. You get fish two days in a row. I'm gonna get fish every day. What kind of fish you get? I got gr- uh, grilled grouper. Was it lit? No, it was grilled. They lit the grill. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Cool. It wasn't wood fire. No, it was. It was lit. It was lit. Too. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Am I wrong to say that Tua doesn't impress me? Says Jeremiah Body. I think you might be wrong. Here's my other hot take that I didn't say about Alabama yesterday, and I, we need to go. But uh, Saban needs to quit fighting to keep Jalen Hurts on the team. He needs to rip the Band-Aid off and let him go. Jalen Hurts not as good a quarterback as Tua, and keeping Jalen Hurts around is poison that Alabama doesn't need. They should just let him go. Let it happen already. Getting home from first on a double was not something U of M was expecting. Steve C., you might be right, but that's the guy that can do it. And maybe Marshall Gilbert can't get home from first base on a double. Maybe maybe these other players we got can't get home from first on a double, but Jake Mangum can, and that's who they put on base. Have you always had the Dog Nation signage on the – did y'all not take the Dog Nation sign out? Why didn't you take the Dog Nation sign out? I look like a – we always take it out. It's not supposed to be there. Brian Shoemaker says, you the man. That's correct. Ken Letson, no, we haven't always had the uh, Dog Nation sign in there. We have multiple shows. Dog Nation records at 10. I record at 11.45. We always switch the set out. Uh, Landshark's not here today. She's the only responsible one we have. And uh, so there it is. Two is overrated. He's only played one game, Eric Wiggins. I don't think he's overrated. He's better than Jalen Hurts. He's better than Jalen Hurts, no doubt. Jalen Hurts is the guy that was overrated the whole time. You know who's overrated? The most overrated quarterback in the SEC is not Hurts. It's not Tua. It's Jake Fromm. That's who it is. By far. I agree. He is the 2018 version of Jalen Hurts. He's going to get replaced by Justin Fields. Don't know Jerry Monsoor, and it's Friday. All right. We got to go. We're we're running too late. I appreciate the the talk. I enjoy the talk, but uh, I have to go so uh, we can get other shows in here and I can go eat lunch. My name is Brandon Walker. Terp, you ready to shut us off? My name is Brandon Walker. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate. Junior, I'm not letting you have this. It was not a good decision. There's nothing you can say to make that a good decision. I can't believe you're discussing this. I, I got to talk to Junior Ray for one more second. You're telling me Luke Alexander hits a lot of ground balls. You know what else he does? He had a walk-off home run against Ole Miss. He gets walk-off doubles. Uh, he is the bat in the lineup that can end that game, that has shown the ability to end that game. And Ole Miss willingly brought him up with two men on base. And it was a terrible decision. You can defend the decision, but at the end of the day, Mississippi State 7, Ole Miss 6, directly because of that decision. They brought a loss into play when they didn't have to. Just like Gary Henderson brought a loss into play when he didn't have to. He had a guy that strikes everybody out, and he chose to go somewhere else. But anyway, we're not going to keep going. We're not going to keep talking. I got to go. If you want to keep talking about this, we'll talk about it tomorrow. My name is Brandon Walker. You've been watching more Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country.